Hello, I'm Andy Rash, the technical trainer for DMAG Cranes and Components. Today I want to talk further about the DMAG DE Drive Inverter. We're going to look at the self-tuning run known as an ID run and how to set that up. The ID run would have to be performed after a new 4 amp and larger inverter is installed as a replacement. It may also come in handy if you notice symptoms of the crane moving a couple inches the wrong direction and chugging or shuddering. That means the original ID run has been lost in the memory of the inverter. So for those two circumstances, follow the following steps using the KP500 keypad. The first step to initiate an ID run is to install a small jumper between the first and the third terminal on the 210A terminal block on the bottom of the inverter. We prepared a small jumper made out of wire and hammered the ends flat so that it will fit into the terminals with the existing wiring. Nothing gets disconnected here. The jumper gets added to the existing wiring between the first and third pins of 210A. I'd like to first show you how we prep our jumper. In this case, a piece of paper clip makes an ideal jumper. But notice that the ends where we'll insert it are pounded flat so that they can easily go in with the other existing wires and not stress the terminal screws too bad. We're also going to use a micro screwdriver to perform the installation. We will begin our process by installing the jumper into the first and third terminals on the 210A plug without removing any of the other existing wiring. Power is off in this panel. I am loosening the screws carefully with my micro screwdriver, tightening, making sure not to over tighten and strip the screws. Next, we'll plug in our KP500 keypad using the base plate and cord. We plugged in our keypad. We have our jumper in place and we've applied power to the panel. We can now initiate an ID run. The initiation is done with the keypad by going to parameter 796 and entering a data set number as the first input to initiate. The data set number will be determined by either looking at the X63 plug on the bottom of the inverter to see what type and color wire jumper is in place and comparing that to a published table that's one of the attachments to the video. Or you can determine it by also looking in the table and checking against the motor model size. In this case, our X63 has an X64 jumper with a single black jumper wire. That indicates use of data set 14. If we saw two blue wires as jumpers, that would be data set 13. If we saw a single red wire in the X64 plug, we would use data set 12 and no plug at all in place, you use data set 11. Our published reference will also list the data set to use for each motor type and size. In this case, we have a pair of ZBA-71B4 bridge motors. Okay, now that we have our keypad plugged in, notice the common default is to show value 241 on the screen. We'll have to change our menu and go to the parameter menu to get to 796. So I first change that 
and then I use my arrow keys to scroll to parameter 796. Now we determined earlier that we will input value 14 as our data set entry for this particular motor and inverter. Notice in this case the word warn showed up in our screen. This can happen on using the small ZBA 71 motor to get past the word warn at this step which usually won't show up. Enter a 1 as a command to continue anyway. The ID run is static. You will hear noise coming from the system and the motors. It will take about three to four minutes to complete. The screen on the keypad will return back to the normal default at the end of the ID run. In a very special case which we have here of having ZBA 71 size motors, at this point we must also go and check parameters 721 and 701 after an ID run. Now that we've reached parameter 721, we see that it is already been set at 5.00, which is the recommendation on our sheet. So I'll simply hit enter and it'll set that. Then we will escape from parameter 721 and go back down to parameter 701. And it is recommended that for parameter 701 it be set at 10. So I'll select the parameter. I'll use the arrow key to lower the value. And then set it with enter. At that point we'll escape We'll go to our value menu and enter 241 so it stays as our default parameter whenever we start up with the keypad. Now that we've successfully completed an ID run, we can power down the equipment, take out our jumper, and then give it a test run to see that we are operating smoothly. Now that we've verified that the operation is smooth after conducting the ID run and that we're happy with it, we will call that a job done and remind you there are other videos in our series on the DE drive for troubleshooting and for using the keypad to extract error codes. Please watch our videos and click the buttons if you like them and join our channel.